tonight and call the order. Please rise. Pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'll begin with a roll call. Jaden Bailey? Here. Alan Stork? Here. William Gutschalk? Here. Jeff Spink? Here. Doug Tystead? Here. Robert Owens? Steve Skeet? Wolf Schmidt? Here. Steve Rosenthal? Here. All right, got a total of eight here tonight. All right, before we get to the uh, Secretary's report, I know we've got a pretty good crowd tonight, and that's good. I like a lot of people coming. Uh, I'm going to try to get through this as professionally and not as speedy, but I know weather's coming. So I take that in consideration because we all know that. So I'm not going to cut it short and not abbreviate, but I do know we have weather coming, and I will take all that into effect. Okay? So just bear with us as we get through this. All right? Secretary's report. Mr. Chair, did you want to approve the minutes prior to the Secretary's report? Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, I'll take a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Second. All right. A motion and a second. I'll call the roll. Jaden Bailey. Abstain. I was absent. Okay. Alan Stork. Yes. William Gutschalk. Yes. Jeff Spink. Yes. Doug Tysted. Yes. Will Schmidt. Yes. Steve Rosenthal. Yes. All right. Six. Six approved minutes. All right. Thank you. All Sorry right. about that. Skipped on my notes there. No Secretary's report. Good evening, Commission. Um, on your agenda tonight, on the consent agenda, we have two plats. So, of course, if you approve the agenda, those will automatically be approved. On your regular agenda, we have one preliminary plat that requires an exception. We also have two exceptions, uh, both for track splits. Now, I just wanted to remind you that this is a new application. This is the first time you're reviewing this. Uh, as part of the 2023 language amendments, you guys approved um, re regulations that now allow for uh, exceptions exceptions to be approved on track splits and lot splits. So um, it still goes through the track split process. However, it does not match the regulation, so they can come to you directly to request an exception without having to plat. So I just wanted to make you guys aware that those two, these are two new applications that you have not seen before. So if you have any questions during the actual hearing for it, just let us know. But um, again, just a reminder of what those are. Um, in addition to that, we do have two um, public hearings. Uh, both are for rezones. And then um, once we convene for tonight, we do have a study session for the comp plan review scheduled. So please stay here. Do not leave. Um, we'd like to get through that as quickly as possible. Right. Thank that's you. it. Oh, in addition to that, we do have um, some extra papers on your uh, spaces. There was a letter submitted after the agenda was, was sent out for DEV 2404, that first rezone, and then two letters in regards to the comp plan study session. So please be sure to look at those. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Do I have any declarations? None? All right. Do I have a motion for approval of the agenda? So maybe second. All right. I got a motion and a second. I'll call a roll. Jaden Bailey? Yes. Alan Stork? Yes. William Gustschalk? Yes. Jeff Spink? Yes. Doug Tysted? Yes. Will Schmidt? Yes. Steve Rosenthal? Yes. All right. Eight votes. Approved the agenda. All right. We'll go to 9A, that approves the consent agenda. So we'll go to a regular agenda. So we'll go to 9A, according to your notes there. The Leavenworth County Planning Commission will now hear case DEV 24-003, preliminary plat for Orchard Meadows, as outlined in the posted agenda. This is not a public hearing item. Planning staff, staff report. All right. Uh, 
Good evening again. Before you is case DEV 24003, which is the preliminary plat only for the Orchard Meadows subdivision. Um, the applicant is requesting to replat the parcel there shown on the map 00000 166th Street into a subdivision comprising of, sorry, I'm not prepared, I believe it's 16 lots. Sorry, 12 lots. Mm -hmm. um, they are proposing to extend Orchard Road that sits to the west of this property um, and expanding that road to connect into 166th Street. That is the only proposed roadway that is in regard, included in the subdivision. Um, they are intending to build out the entire road as part of their final plat. Um, this property is zoned R143, which is our one acre zoning. Uh, all lots are compliant with that zoning district. However, this plot does require an exception because it does not meet Article 50, Section 40.1A, which is the block length requirement. It's a little over 1,200 1, linear feet. So you guys will need to approve an exception for this plot before you can approve the preliminary plot. Uh, staff has provided the full analysis in the staff report, but if you have any questions, please let me know. All right. <clears throat> Does the applicant wish to speak? Good evening. Joe Herring, Herring Surveying, 315 North 5th Street. Uh, staff covered this pretty well. The, the exception that's requested is for the 1,200-foot limit. Uh, the tracks to the south are built out, and the track, the one track that does have a little bit of open space is really too narrow to put a road through and get houses on both sides, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to have that road taken to the north for future connection. It's going to connect to the subdivision to the west and immediately have a road going north, so it, uh, I believe staff was in support of this. Here to answer any questions if you have. What them. what is the link? We say over, a little over twelve hundred. Do you have a how little over twelve hundred? <coughs> if I I can probably answer that. I think it's approximately fourteen hundred linear 1, feet. Fourteen hundred. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's due to the, the curves in there that yeah. they put in there. So it wasn't a straight through road. We've been encouraged to yeah. stop the straight through roads. We'll make it straight. Only Thanks. <laughs> is there? Check. It is. Yeah, curved roads help with traffic. Absolutely. So I was just being sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, but, but since I got your attention, um, is there any additional information to be presented? On the There's not. No staff supports the yeah. exception. That's what I was looking for. Is the staff supports the exception? We do. Okay. Okay. All right. Well. Commission members, are there any questions or comments from you all, concerns? Okay, so we got two on this one. One is to approve the exception, and then one is to approve the plat. So if there's no questions. I'll entertain a motion to approve the exception. I'll move that we approve the exception for DEV 24-003 as outlined in the staff report. I second. second. Yep. Go ahead. Thank you, Steve. And Doug for the second. All right. All right. Call roll. Just for clarity, if we don't approve the exception, what would be the natural course to them for them to rectify that in terms of the plat? What would that force? One less lot for a north road? Likely, it, you would, it would force another road, more public improvements. Uh, it, it would be extremely hard to hit that 1,200 linear feet in any, any configuration. That's why staff supports it. So I have the authority to prove up to 1,200. I just don't have the authority to prove that extra 200 feet. If I did, I would certainly do that. I think this makes the most sense from a design layout standpoint. Uh, there's really no place to connect north or south, logically. I, get, I guess I'm, where my question comes from is more of a philosophical one, is that this was kind of a hot debated rezoning, and 
a contentious one, and so now it just feels like one that wasn't really favorable, but now we're also giving exceptions, so it's kind of a interesting slippery slope that we're going down, I guess. Well, the intent behind the exception rule is to weigh each and every development condition. If, if there's something that stands out that's a little bit unique, in my opinion, there is here, since you have a developed condition to the north, and there really isn't a palatable way to get anything south, and it is the final component of a larger subdivision. So from a development planning standpoint, the layout you see makes sense. And, uh, again, that's why staff supports this particular exception. If it were just an exception for the purposes of saving money, we would not support that. Thank you. Okay. Good point. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, I have a motion on the floor and a second. <clears throat> I'll call roll. Jaden Bailey. Yes. Alan Stewart? Yes. William Gushock? Yes. Jeff Spink? Yes. Doug Tysed? Yes. Will Schmidt? Yes. And Steve Rosenthal? Yes. Seven. Okay, so the, the exception carries with a vote of seven to zero. Right. <clears throat> now I'd like to entertain a, a, um, a motion to approve the plat to DEB 24-003 preliminary plat for Orchard Meadows. I move that we approve the preliminary plat uh, for case number DEB 24-003 for Orchard Meadows, staff recommendations. Thank you. Can I have a second? Okay. Bushman is the second. Discussion? I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? For the plat. Okay. All right. I'll call roll. Jaden Bailey? Yes. Alan Stewart? Yes. William Gushock? Yes. Jeff Spink? Yes. Steve Ski? Yes. Will Schmidt? Yes. Steve Rosenthal? Yes. Mr. Chairman. Hey, I speak. have a new addition you to the... Speak. You didn't call me name. Oh, Doug, did I skip you, Doug? I'm yep. sorry, Doug Tysted. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. I have a commissioner that joined. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. So the... <clears throat> so I have an approval of eight to zero for the plat. Okay. Next on the agenda is nine Bravo, Leavenworth Planning and uh, <clears throat> Leavenworth County Planning Commission. We'll now hear case DEV 24-014, which is a track split exception for limestone as outlined in your posted agenda. This is not a public hearing. Uh, planning and staff, staff report. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, the case uh, before you tonight is DEB 24-014. It's an exception from the zoning and subdivision regulations of Article 50, Section 4.3i. Uh, That's the lot depth to lot width ratio and also an exception for Article 50, Section 43.d. Uh, and that's the lot design. Uh, current zoning for this property is RR5, um, and it's mixed residential for the future uh, land use um, designation. The property is located along Tognoxie Drive and Eisenhower Road, um, also known as 0000, zero, zero, zero Tognoxie Drive. Uh, your decision of approval or disapproval of their requested exception is based upon three factors. That can be found on page two of the staff report. Um, staff's analysis of those factors can be viewed in a staff report, um, and I can answer any questions that you may have. Uh, the applicant's agent is also here to answer any questions as well. Uh, with that being said, I am subject to any questions that you may have. 
The staff recommendation is to approve the exception as it stated, based on all the factors that you listed there yes. and on page two? Okay. Okay. Does the applicant wish to speak? Joe Herring, Herring Surveying, 315 North 5th. Uh, staff covered it very well. Um, I'm not sure if it's five acres or two and a half acres zoning, but either way, the they could have made the lock to width depth ratio, but again, it would have created a an irregular triangle shape in the back on the southeast corner of this property, and it just didn't seem right. We're trying to square it up and get the rest of it. And it's all caused by this long rectangular track that runs along Eisenhower Road. Has made it uh, the angle of the road and the angle of that track makes us just irregular in shape. Here for any questions. Gentlemen, you have questions? I, for I'm sorry, I have a question. Can you go back a, a slide, please? Okay. That, <clears throat> that doesn't match the next slide. Yeah, yes, sir, because that the next slide is just a concept of what they're doing. So that's the entire track as it stands right now. Okay. And what he's proposing is this being track one of of two of, tracks. So yes. The, so the other track will still be up there in, in, in a more regular design. Yes. And so what we're doing here is splitting this tract out in order to allow it to conform. Is that because I was having a hard right. time understanding what we were doing there. Okay. Yeah, the one along the, the main road there is the is where you're trying to square it square yeah, it out. Square and then it you're out. trying your best and as we're looking at the photo to the south. Yeah, the south it leaves the line a little easier to develop with a you know if they ever go high density yeah. in that area. And it's it's current RR five, correct? Uh, Nate, it's two and a half. I said correct. It. RR two point five. Okay. Yes, sir. That's all I have. Any other questions for Joe? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other additional information to be presented? All right. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments uh, of the commission? Okay. Well, I'll entertain a motion to approve the exception. Uh, DEV 24-014, the track split exception for limestone as outlined in the posted agenda. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve case number DEV-24-014 as presented by staff and the representative for the property. Second. So, thank you. Okay. Any other discussion of the motion? I have a motion and a second on the floor. Any other discussion from the commission? All right. I'll do a roll call vote. Jaden Bailey. Yes. Alan Stewart. Yes. William Gustav. Yes. Jeff Spink. Yes. Doug Tysted. Yes. Steve Ski. Yes. Wolf Schmidt. Yes. Steve Rosenthal. Yes. Okay, vote carries 8 to 0. Approval of the track split exception DEV 24 014. We'll move to the next thing on the agenda, which is 9 Charlie. Lovemore County Planning Commission will now hear case DEV 24 017, track split exception for Wagoner, as outlined in the post and agenda. Once again, this is not a public hearing item. Planning staff, staff report. All right, good evening again, gentlemen. Uh, the case uh, before you right now is 
Case DEV 24-017. This is an exception from the zoning and subdivision regulations of Article 50, Section 4-3-I. Um, this is the lot depth to lot width ratio. Uh, the current zoning for this property is RR5, um, which is it is also the same zoning uh, for the future land use, land use uh, RR5. Um, the property is located along Turner Road, also known as 0000, zero, zero, zero Turner Road. Uh, your decision of the approval or disapproval or requested exception is based upon the three factors that can be found on that page two. Um, staff's only concern uh, with this proposed layout um, is that the frontage for the west lot, if redeveloped, could create a nonconformity in the future. Uh, staff would recommend that the east lot be reduced to 300 feet or as close to it as possible uh, to remain compliant with regulations. Uh, this would allow for the addition of future road right away if redeveloped is sought, for, sought after for the west track, keeping potential lots uh, in compliance with the regulations. Uh, the further analysis of the factors can be viewed on the staff report, um, and I can answer any questions that you may have. Uh, the applicant agent is also here to answer questions as well. Uh, with that being said, I am subject to questions. I have one. Uh, we're just approving the exception. We're not approving the lot split. It wouldn't... No, you're just approving just the exception of, of this, and this is the lot death to lot width. Right, exception. so the reducing a lot, we uh, the, the footage on the lot has nothing to do with us tonight, right? No, it so it's the lot depth to lot width would be required regardless of the um, frontage for that west lot. So yes, you guys are just approving the exception to okay, that. Okay. So, so either option would require an exception, which is why it's before. Okay, yeah. so it's up to whoever is going to approve the lot split to make sure the three hundred feet is. Yeah, and that's just staff's recommendation as a potential issue we see for the future if that larger lot were ever subdivided mm -hmm. um, further. Um, and that would allow for the addition of a roadway to get back into the rest of the lot. Now, that could never happen in the future because this um, lot has a lot of um, contours and changes in topography, which would make it difficult. But it still could potentially happen in you know, we just wanted to provide that insight for you. Well, I agree with that, but it really doesn't have anything to do with us tonight. Okay. So if if you reduce it, if you reduce the track that you show, which is currently showing at 330 feet, if you do it, reduce it to 300, which is the minimum, correct? Correct. Uh, what, what does the other, what does the west side of the remaining lot Based off of the information we could obtain, it would be about approximately 360. So that would get you the 300 feet of frontage plus a 60-foot right-of-way, um, which is what our concern would be for redevelopment. But the applicant agent is in attendance, so if you have questions about that, you can ask him. And again, the intent there is to provide you all the information, maybe too much information as it relates to... Well, the, it, you're not wrong. But the, again, when you're dealing with an exception, all of the pertinent information we try to include. Well, that and you're looking out for the best interest of the applicant right now with, yes. you know, if it were me, this is what, you know, that's basically what you're saying is, hey, you know, as we're doing this, something to think about is road frontage. Correct. If you shaped your lot like this, you wouldn't have to worry about an additional road frontage meet agreement. Right, with the 300 feet. Okay, I got you. I got you. I appreciate you. But you're absolutely right, Steve. It's yeah. got nothing to do with diet, but it's great information, especially if the applicant's here tonight. Right? So, okay. Okay. Um, does the applicant wish to speak? Come on up, Joe. You know, I think we need to meet a chair pretty close to the... <clears throat> Joe Herring, Herring Surveying 315 North 5th. Staff covered this very well. Uh, applicant, you know, won't be against going down to 300 feet just as long as there are some structures on there that we haven't measured out yet on the smaller track that we're cutting out. As long as we don't get too close or encroach on them. Uh, the large track has some oil and gas wells, so it makes sense to give them a little more frontage 
protect for the future. But and and they covered the terrain going south gets very uh, very tough to develop. And then the I guess all the surrounding party property is owned by a, a single family, the Crow family, and then this is really close to the Flatlands landfill. Okay. Commission, any other meetings for any other questions for Joe? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. I know exactly where this is. Any uh, any other additional information be presented? No, sir. All right. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. Well, are there questions or comments from a member of the commission? Okay. Well, in that case, I'll entertain a motion to approve the exception for case DEV 24-017, track split exception for Wagner as outlined in the posted agenda. And Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve case number DEV-24-017 as presented by uh, staff and representative for the property. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Steve? All right, I'll call roll. Jaden Bailey? Yes. Alan Stewart? Yes. William Gustschalk? Yes. Jeff Spink? Yes. Doug Tysted? Yes. Steve Skeet? Yes. Will Schmidt? Yes. Steve Rosenthal? Yes. All right. The motion is carried by a vote of 8 to 0 for the exception approved. All right. These are, this is the first of two public hearings that we have tonight. The Leavenworth County Planning Commission will now consider case DEV 24-004, a rezoning request from RR5 to RR2.5, as outlined in the posted agenda. This requires a public hearing. Public comments are limited to three minutes per person. The applicant has five minutes. We have a little alarm clock up here, and I just... In, in professional form, just be in consideration. It's three minutes from the time you get started, and we'll remind you nicely. Don't, don't make me be the bad guy. I'm not a bad guy. I'm a nice guy. Um, but we'll let you know that we, we're no longer hearing you uh, to please step away. Okay? Can everybody hear me in the back? Okay, good deal. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, staff planning, staff report. For you is case DEV 24004, which is a request to rezone the property loca the properties located at 22323, 22027, and 00000 Tonganoxie Drive from RR5 to RR2.5, which is rural residential 2.5. Um, the property in properties in question um, are designated as residential 2.5 minimum acres according to the future land use map of the comprehensive plan. Um, this property, as mentioned, it comprises three parcels. There are two existing houses on those three parcels. Um, the applicant has provided a concept plan of what they are proposing, which is to um, split off one of the southern houses there, I believe is on parcel four, and then also potentially create another 2.5 acre parcel, number three, but the remainder of the land would remain in its current configuration, essentially. Um, they ha have also mentioned that they are re requesting all of the land be rezoned to RR 2.5 in order to plan for future estates um, or estate planning, which you guys have heard previously. Um, staff did review this based off of the uh, seven factors that one considers as part of a rezoning request. That analysis was provided in your staff report. Um, but due to the fact that the comprehensive plan land use map has identified this as residential 2.5, staff is recommending approval of their request. So if you have any questions, please let me know. But the staff applicant agent is in attendance. So 
tell me again how this quantifies for 2.5 vicinity of the paved road or what is it again when the comprehensive plan was created a future land use map was also generated to identify areas for future rezoning or uh, changes to our zoning map. This area was identified because it is within a thousand feet of a paved roadway, which is Tonkinoxy Drive in this instance. Mm -hmm. So any any land does it in, within that perimeter was identified for RR 2.5 zoning because of its proximity to a paved road. Um, so that is why it's designated the way it is. Obviously, Tongs Tonkinoxy Drive is one of our higher trafficked arterial roads in the county. Um, so typically you would see higher density development occur along that uh, corridor. So. so I just want to make sure I'm looking at this right. Based on the photo that you're seeing now and based on the notes that I have, we're talking about all of this to be zoned at RR 2.5 versus R5. That includes lot that you're showing in yellow, 1, 2, uh, and 3 and 4. Basically this one landowner's land use requesting to go all land rr 2.5 from current rr 5.0 right now that is correct okay okay thank you upon opening this public comment portion of this hearing those of you who wish to speak either for or against this item upon recognition will give your name and address each time you begin to speak this is necessary since this is a public hearing and it's being recorded. The public comment portion of this hearing is now open. Would the applicant please come forward? <clears throat> Joe Herring, Herring Survey, 315 Orca. Uh, staff covered it just right. It's, it meets the comp plan. That's what they're looking at doing. Uh, to the south, there is B3 zoning, so there is a higher density zone out in this area directly south of this property. And there are several reasons for taking it all to 2.5 is one is estate planning. Two is that once we do this, we have to do a boundary line adjustment in which track two will be created and a portion of track one will adjust south of that pond. And if we don't rezone at all, then we're going to have tracts of land with multiple zoning. So it's just easier to do it all together. Uh, Four and three will be more of the two and a half acres. Uh, that is on the curve. That is under design for, I think the state gave a grant. And, you know, safety concerns there are going to be hopefully remedied in the near future. And track two, the goal there is to get that in a track that's larger than 40 acres. There is a, a structure, a barn on the property. And to have a barn on a track less than 40 acres you have to go through some other hoops and pay some fees and this allows that barn to stay on the 40 acre farm track so, but the main important thing is that it meets our comp plan and it's as staff said it's on a high traffic road and that's where you see the higher development that, that one plot of land um, that one track that's that's not a part of this but it juts in there what size is that the one directly north of three? Correct. Oh, that, that could be five acres, I would I would imagine. It's yeah, I believe Five it's acres, right. it's, you know, the design of it was more road frontage in depth. Six, six seven acres. Yeah. And, and is that one, and what's that zoned as? R5. R5? Right, and it is not a part of this rezone. <coughs> no, I, I know it's, I'm, I'm aware of that. I'm just, I'm just trying to see all the factors. You can, this map shows the B3 zoning directly south of this property. Correct. Which has a higher use allowance. Thank you. Okay. Commission, any other questions for Joe? One yeah. other thing, if questions do arise during, if anybody wants to come and talk for or against that are in attendance, if there are questions, uh, we are available to answer those, hopefully, at the end of their comments. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. 
Hey, we will now hear from those individuals present wishing to speak in favor of the request. In favor of the request. Okay. We will now hear from those individuals present wishing to speak in opposition of the request. Terry Stevens, 18972 Green Road. I strongly oppose changing this zoning to RR 2.5. I've lived out there in, the adjoining, in close proximity to that for 37 years. I knew Everett and Bernice Smith that owned it prior to me living out there. It's always been RR5, 330-foot road frontage. I oppose changing the rules now for any one person's personal financial benefit. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. I mean, Mr. Stevens. Thanks, Terry. Good evening, distinguished board members. I am opposed to this rezoning. St to state, state your name and your address. I'm sorry. Mike yeah. Doyle, 21848 187th Street. I live in that corner just below it, so you can see that it does impact me quite a bit. Two points to make. Uh, RR5 is a different quality of life than a 2.5. Five gives you the space. You drive out along Tongue Lexa Road, you can see the houses are spread out. There's a lifestyle there, and that's why the county's had RR5 for so many years. The 2.5 doesn't get you that. It gets you what you have across the street from the winery a few miles north where you've got all those houses piled on top of each other. Just not the same quality of life at all. Finally, at some point, you all have to say no to these requests. Please say no to this one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Doyle. My name is Tom Trowbridge. I own some property close proximity there. I simply have a question. Tom, give me your address real quick. Oh, 16082 Fairmount Road. But my property is over there on Green Road. I simply have a question about these developments like this. Who is going to need road improvements? Who funds that for that? Are taxpayers, again, going to have to completely redo Tonganoxie Road for this? I'm simply tired of the taxes. So, and every time there's a development, it seems like taxpayers get stuck with new schools, new roads, new everything, and the developer walks away. So, I'm a puppet. So, so Mr. Trowbridge, you ask a great question. We here in the commission, um, we, we really can't answer that question, but I can tell you that we can turn you on to the right people that can answer that question. We all have our opinions because we're your neighbors, right? Um, but here tonight, I can't really answer the question on who's going to pay the taxes and the road repairs and all that kind of stuff. I can't well, do that. I'm just saying but it's a it's a valid it's a valid concern though. It is a valid concern yeah, because the whole road out there. One thing they call it a high density property. It's absolutely it's not high density out there by no means. So anyway, that's just my question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trowbridge. Appreciate it. Good evening. My name's Mary Beverly. Uh, I live at 19026 Green Road, Tonganoxie. Uh, we are just a little north and west of all of this land here. And my husband and daughter and I, we moved from Jackson Heights subdivision, where you've got lots really close to each other. Um, we moved out here in the country to be able to see the stars at night. Um, to have our neighbors, you know, a little further apart from us. And we all enjoy each other, exchanging vegetables, doing all that thing. Uh, we uh, certainly wouldn't uh, prohibit anybody from doing whatever they want with their own land. We understand that. But at five acres, like the gentleman before me said, five acres gives us that room, that space that we need to just kind of enjoy still being in the country 
When we bring in these developments and houses are so close to each other, we lose that. We, we expect light pollution. We also expect stormwater pollution. Well, maybe not pollution, but stormwater runoff. And our property is downslope from this, um, along with some of the other folks. So uh, we are opposed to this. We think five acres is plenty. Um, and we just appreciate you listening tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beverly. Michael McGee. I live at 22190 Tonganoxie Road, right across the street. And it's been mentioned by several people, and I'll do it again. Um, the quality of life for five acre plots versus two and a half is just it's not going to be the same. Not going to be the same. Wow. I've been out here for. About 40 years? Wow. Don't do that to us. Please. Thank you, Mr. McGee. <clears throat> All right. Joe? question and I did kind of touch on it before we have state funds to improve Tonganoxie Road and I believe that kicks off in November it's already been designed or in design so that is getting improved which will handle you know anything that happens out here and I mentioned a couple times that the tracks below are B3 the B3 tracks are also 2.5 or 2.7 acres they are below five acres already so this is not an out of the norm request it has matching properties of the size directly adjacent to it with a higher density zone. So just wanted to clarify that. If it Thank if you. it would stay at R5, it still allows the landowner to do everything they're going to do. Other, The only change would they would combine three and four. Would that be roughly correct? Everything else stays the same? Not sure if that's how it would play out. Uh, you know, I don't know how a layout with five acres would work with Three and four, most likely you would combine it and then uh, just lose a lot there. But that is not the wish. That is not our comp plan. And the comp plan was a public hearing. So. But if you change three and four to five acre lots, then you lose the 40 acre lot for the barn with the agricultural issues, correct? Uh, potentially, if you have, if you go and try to get two, combine four and three, and then you want to get another lot. Out or, or make three and four. One. Or three and four. Yeah, combine them. Yeah, that should yeah, be five. Three four, <coughs> four, they would just combine. Track two would remain the same, but if they wanted to get the additional lot, the track that they're trying to do right now, then you run the risk of having that issue of two not being. Yeah, I mean, if you expanded yes. three and four, if, if we kept it at R5, and you you expanded both of those, then that changes your plan for the 40 acre for the barn. Yeah, definitely. Thank you again. Thank you, Joe. Is there any additional information to be presented? No, commissioners. Okay. Mike Doyle, 21848, 187th Street. Uh, just one more thing. If you go to the rather ex excellent maps that the county provides, and you pull back and you look at the county writ large, and you look at this area between Leavenworth and Tonganoxie, you can see that RR5 is endemic to the area. There's a few little spots where it's 2.5 where you guys have clearly authorized uh, exceptions to that. Uh, Going back to my earlier comment, even though there's these little pimples out there, pardon the phrase there, you guys got to say no at some point. And this has an impact. You heard from all the folks. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Mr. Doyle. 
All right. The public comment portion of this public hearing is now closed. Kansas law allows for a petition protesting the decision of the Planning Commission to be filed. That petition must be filed within 14 calendar days after the date of this public hearing. Additional information on the filing of a protest petition can be obtained from the Office of Planning and Zoning. Are there questions, comments from the members of the Commission? Uh, I would like clarification from uh, staff. This is... Uh, in the comp plan, correct? Correct. The future land use map identifies this as residential 2.5 acres, which is um, compatible with our R2.5 zoning. How long ago did that pass? 2021. 2021. Mm -hmm. And that was public hearings? Yep, and that was all part of public outreach, public participation, and public hearings, yes. So if we do anything other than approve, we are going against the comp plan? The long range comp plan. It would not be in commiserate with the future land use map. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That was what I wanted to ask. Pardon me? That's what I wanted to ask. Was Go ahead. That's no. <laughs> well, See, no, you did wonderful. But, uh, but that, was, <laughs> that, I mean, applies to this, but applies to the bigger issue, which is the comp plan. And I think this kind of magnifies what we run into a lot is people not necessarily being well versed into what that future land use map means as opposed to what the current zoning is and I, I think there's you know that muddies the waters a little bit but in the public hearing that developed that comp plan is there a state statute into any mandatory amount of um, citizen appearance can you explain that a little or, bit or uh, input from citizens to deem it a, a public hearing that was well attended? No, there is no statutory requirement for a minimum amount of public hearing. We are required to publish and we are required to have those public hearings. And as I understand it, it was before my time that they were published numerous times. Yeah. So there is no minimum criteria if people don't show up to those meetings to, for public input at which it kicks the public hearing out, that right. there is no statutory criteria for that. So then, just to, to further clarify, so this, I don't think this is what happened, but one citizen could attend that, and then it's deemed a public hearing, and a decision is made, and then all, this, all of these decisions are based off that decision, but yet we have a public sector that feels like their voice was never heard. Um, I'm only saying that because I think it highlights really where the crux of most of the problems are, uh, is that we as a commission make these decisions based upon a future land use map that many people feel doesn't represent the citizenry as a whole. And so that therein lies the conflict. And again, this again. is not an uncommon issue. I have been doing this for over three decades, yeah. and this is par for the course. It does happen in every community that I know of. Uh, Lemore County has roughly 80,000 80, residents in it. So again, the, the these public hearings are, are published and you know staff tries to get yep. public input and at the end of the day there are multiple tiers of approval that occur in a comprehensive plan process. It certainly isn't one meeting. <clears throat> Boundaries are drawn and it's approved. It's a process that typically goes over a 12-month period or so before those final components are approved. But future land use tends to be uh, a contentious mm -hmm. component to any comprehensive plan, regardless of community that, that you're located in. But at the end of the day, when staff makes a recommendation, our primary component is the future land use plan. We go to that plan, it's a visioning document, and we adhere to that plan. So when we make these recommendations to you, they're based in regulation and based on approved policy. That's well said. And there was, before the comp plan, there was public hearings in several of them and at different locations, south end and north end of of Leavenworth County. I attended most of them. Uh, they weren't well attended. A uh, few people came, but um, very few. Uh, the comments were at the time they wanted to keep the county rule. Uh, when the comp plan came to vote with the county commissioners, uh, they did go with the two and a half acre 
uh, a lot more than what it was, but I think it's even been changed since then uh, to the whole county. You go, am I correct in that? There are multiple designations. There are multiple designations throughout yeah. the county. So, yeah, this happens to sit right on the edge of the 2.5 and 5-acre criteria. Right. You know, so, Can again, I think... Overlay? Land use? I'm sorry. <coughs> Actually, it's in your staff report. Yeah. If you I'll, take a look I'll, I'll at it, you'll be able to see it. So you'll see the outlined area here rests right on, on that boundary. So again, I, I wasn't part and parcel to these particular meetings, but it appears to me that they, they believed that this particular section was really the boundary of which you're going to have some urban development over the lifetime of a comprehensive plan, which again is typically 10 years. So we don't see a large uh, departure from the development pattern, the patterns that have occurred over the last five years. We keep maps on those particular things as building permits are issued. So I don't know that from a staff standpoint we would disagree with anything that we see here. So again, it sits right on the boundary of a, of a higher designation. And that's land use 2.5, but in reality, a lot of those tracks up there are are still zoned R5. Again, there has not been a ton of development pressure in there. And as you go, if you go back through the aerial maps and you take a look at the historical record, yes, all of these tracks started out as enormous tracks and began to split over time as development occurred. So. Yeah, again, there is a lot of five acre and 10 acre tracks, but there are also smaller tracks in proximity to this as well. But predominantly, they're five acres and higher, but just to the south of here, as I believe the applicant stated before, there are a number of tracks that are two and a half or below. And if you go directly to the east of this area, you have multiple two and a half acre tracks. So it does have proximity zoning in that particular area anyway. But again, from a staff standpoint, we stand on this this plan. This plan is what we make our recommendations from. Well, it's clearly obvious tonight <clears throat> we didn't have anyone except the applicant speak in favor. We had a pretty good audience that, speak, that spoke in opposition, which we're going to see more and more and more because the only thing that I've been seeing a lot of that comes in here um, on the petitions, right, are those that are wanting to develop their residential farmland, you know. So that's, I mean, that's, that's what we've been seeing a lot of is, you know, we want to go ahead and make it so to meet the land use planning zone map. We want to, we want to make it so to meet it for, uh, future estate or whatever it may be, uh, but that's. You know, I think I made a comment about that about two years ago. Seems like we get together and this is all we're getting to meet and discuss is people wanting to break up their land into two and a half acre, one acre lots for future estate, you know, well, or our development one. But as a long as a landowner, uh, you want to. You want to maximize the uh, potential profitability of, of your land. This doesn't mean this is going to be developed into these lots right now. It may not be for years. But the landowner uh, should have the right to, be, to get the best potential out of his property. Just because it is five acres, or two, he wants to go to two and a half acres, doesn't mean all these lots are going to be two and a half acres. There are several of them that are that are zoned two and a half acres, and there's seven or eight or ten acre uh, lots on the development. So, uh, hate to restrict a, a property owner's rights to maximize his potential. I don't disagree with that, except for it's a slippery slope because the natural conclusion to that statement is then why have zoning at all? Then they could just put as I mean, you're drawing the line somewhere. I think that, I mean, 
it's just the same conversation we have all the time. Because where that line is about what's rural, the fact of the matter is that with this comp plan and when it was passed, we had commissioners who their concept of rural doesn't match the citizens' concept of rural. And that there's no other way to put it other than that. And so that creates the conflict. But well, that's water under the bridge, I guess. Well, we are going to discuss the uh, comp plan on our uh, meeting <coughs> after this meeting. So stick around and voice your opinion. That's how we're going to get it across to us and to, to the county commissioners. If you're not happy with the comp plan, let's, you know, voice your opinion. Let, let us all know that you're not happy with it and you want to change. Any other questions or comments? I can see it in your faces. I can see it. <clears throat> I feel it. <clears throat> okay. Well, at this time, I'll entertain a motion on this request. Mr. Chairman, I will make a uh, motion that, that uh, the Commission approve case number DEV-24-004 as presented by staff as discussed and uh, in taken into consideration that this is has been approved uh, for over two years in the long range comp plan. Okay, Commission, I have a motion on the floor to approve, as it is stated, for DEV 24-004, a rezoning request from RR5 to RR2.5. Do I have a second? Okay. I have a second. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any discussion of the motion? All right. I'll call roll. Jaden Bailey. Yes. Alan Stewart. Yes. William Gutschalk. Yes. Jeff Spink. Yes. Doug Tysted. Yes. Steve Skeet? Yes. Will Schmidt? Yes. Steve Rosenthal? Yes. All right. Motion is carried by a vote of 8 to 0. The Board of County Commissioners will consider this item no earlier than April 3rd, 2024, meeting. The Commission agenda is posted on the Leavenworth County website and is available for public viewing. I would like to repeat this. The Kansas, the Kansas law allows for a petition protesting this decision of the Planning Commission to be filed. That petition must be filed within 14 calendar days from today, from this public hearing. Additional information of the filing of the protest petition can be obtained from the Office of Planning and Zoning. We'll go to the last public hearing. Lovemore County Planning Commission will now consider case DEV 24-005, a rezoning request from RR1 to RR5 as outlined in the posted agenda. The public comment is limited to three minutes. The applicant is limited to five minutes. Planning staff will now give a staff report. Great. Um, this is case DEV 24005, which is a request to rezone the property shown here at 00000 Kansas Avenue from PR1 to RR5. And PR1 is our planned residential zoning district 1, which is a moderate density single family residential zoning district. You guys don't see this very often. It is part of the County Road 1 corridor rezoning that took place a couple years ago. Um, <clears throat> The future land use map has it, this area identified as um, County Road 1. 
Um, but as part of the County Road 1 rezoning process, um, different zoning districts were designated. And this area was designated, and if you want to go back to the previous map, as PR1. Um, so as we discussed in the previous case, um, staff's recommendation in large part takes into consideration the future land use map consideration in conformance with that map. So for this recommendation, staff is recommending denial because it does not comply, the request does not comply with the future land use map. There were other areas um, that staff wavered on whether it met or didn't meet those other six factors that you guys can consider when reviewing a rezoning request. Um, Specifically, the character of the neighborhood, um, zoning, um, economic development, and <coughs> restrictions uh, to nearby property. Most of those concerns arise due to the fact that this parcel is adjacent to the city of Tonganoxy. Um, County Road 1 area was rezoned to this with the anticipated growth that would occur from County Road 1. Um, so from staff's consideration, that was our major concern in regards to this request aside from the future land use map compliance. However, staff did provide the rest of the analysis in the staff report, so if you have any other questions, please let me know. I do believe the staff, or the applicant is in attendance as well. Did you reach out <laughs> to the city of Tonganoxie? We did, and they did not provide any written comments for this case. Okay. Typical. <laughs> we shocked. Upon opening this public comment portion of this hearing, those of you who wish to speak either for or against this item upon recognition will please give your name and address each time you come up to the podium to speak. This is necessary since the public hearing is being recorded. The public comment portion of this hearing is now open. Will the applicant please come forward? Yes, I'm Mark Elston, 21589 Kansas Avenue and owner of the property here. Um, the present situation dealing with the city of Tonganoxie and with Leavenworth County, there's been ongoing discussions for several years uh, with my property being adjacent to the city property that houses the dog food plant and the 80 acres between there. Um, Larry Moe and Curly, my boys there, we want to build uh, as a family unit. That land has been in the family since 1957. Presently, the County Road 1 development has it at 10,000 square foot lots, I believe, which is not anywhere remotely close to the layout of the land. Um, they're trying to keep the land in the family, trying to appease the county by having five acre lots, uh, trying to appease ourselves by having five acre lots for future family members as well to be there. Uh, the, the 10,000 square foot lots with, uh, there's a 12 acre pond there that that just, it, that does not keep the integrity of the land on the way that the county has it set up right now. Uh, we are in gravel with those one entrance to those five acre lots, uh, basically our own family subdivision, uh, to keep integrity with the county for the, the road access and uh, and limit the number of driveways that are needed to have it as one driveway. But uh, the cost of development at 10,000 acres is not feasible. All right. Questions for the applicant? Commission? Okay. Thank you, sir. Well, go ahead, Doug. Go ahead. I'm, I'm struggling here. It's it's zone PR1, but that doesn't mean you have to put every piece into um, PR1. You can still have your five-acre plots. So, Commissioner Tysted, I the PR1 zoning district, as I mentioned, is a medium density residential district. The applicant is correct. There is a maximum size limitation in that zoning district, and it is 10,000 square feet. Okay, so, so there's a maximum lots. here. So, mm -hmm. yep. okay. I'm sorry I didn't pick that up as I I forgot to mention that. I'm, I apologize. What would be the reasoning for a maximum? 
It's to, um, essentially when you're creating these different levels of zoning districts, specifically residential, you'll have low density residential, which is where you have your higher acreage, and then you get medium, um, and then you get high density. So you're trying to create this stepped system and development pattern. Um, so that maximum essentially creates that mid-level or high-level uh, zoning. Um, John can also explain that. It essentially creates a minimum density. That's it. Yeah, it dr it's driving pressure, like development pressure. But yet, it seems totally ant antithetical to the type of things that we hear all the, type, all the time about somebody wanting to rezone for estate planning. That's what we're wanting to do, but we're just wanting to go bigger, but yet we're not going to allow this person. Well, the, from a staff standpoint, the biggest issue is the existing zoning and its proximity to an adjoining community. So, uh, you know, with respect to the landowner, I certainly understand what he's trying to accomplish here. From a, from a staff standpoint, from a planning standpoint, yes, you want higher densities in proximity to communities. Your comp plan states that over and over and over, and most comp plans are similar in that aspect. They want higher densities directly adjoining towns that logically will be served by sewer. Clearly, this is not served by sewer at this particular moment. You couldn't develop it in its current, in its current zoning district in the absence of utilities. Yeah, we're talking like he'd have to put a well or something in. That, well, I mean, like... The, under its, saying existing, under, the current restrictions, he under its current zoning, it would have to have sanitary sewer and it would have to have water improvements. It would have to have a number of utility improvements to be used under the existing zoning. So, uh, you know, again, from a staff standpoint, we can only tell you what it is currently zoned and what the future land use plan calls for. Future land use map calls for what again now? This is still designated as a county road one. That's right, county road future one. Future land yep. use map. And again, that was, we they went through the process of hard zoning all of this area as part of the County Road 1 rezoning after the uh, comprehensive plan was approved. Um, some of the older commissioners might recall that. So it matches currently what the future land use map has designated yeah. it for. Right. And I take it he's on the other side of the road. Based on the, on the way you're showing the, the map now, mm -hmm. on one side of the road, is the residential so many acres per yes, lot? Yes, he is right on the edge of that County Road 1 designation. And on the other side of the road, where he is, he's Rural 1. PR 1. Yes. PR. I mean, right. PR so 1. Essentially, you have a special sub planning district here. Yes. It's <coughs> defined by its legal boundary. And, a, yep. and across the road, you have three units an acre in the future land use plan. Again, a high, higher density. Land use designation. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that. Yeah, three units per acre. Yeah. yeah. High volume. Yes. Yeah. This would be even higher. And this is, Street's this is higher like, than that. This is a higher density. To get the the current zone is higher density. Work. Yeah, yeah. what he's laid out is less, much yes. less than much what less. is right across the street is what you're showing me. Which is which is the reason to go with a different zoning district because again you have a maximum here of that ten thousand square feet in its current zoning in the current zoning mm -hmm. yeah yeah and when we built County Road One uh, that particular zone we hard hard zoned the uh, the the properties in it. Within this legal boundary, there are a number of zoning districts that were hard zoned at that time. Uh, correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. This was one of the few areas in Lemworth County that they anticipated having development in a relatively short order, which I would assume is why they pursued block zoning. It's not uncommon; people do it. That's how it stands today. This underneath that legal boundary. There are a number of different districts that were reflected in the comp plan that they hard zoned at that particular they are time. Hard zoned. At one time. Okay. Let me Thank ask you. you this. He says he wants it to where his kids and him can build on the, his property. It's his property. Can he build on it right now? He can't do what he, he is wanting to do under the current zoning. Okay. Uh, what can he do if he wanted to build on it? It would be a maximum of 10,000 square feet, but there would be a number of other criteria that would have to be met because of its existing zoning district, but mainly he utilities. Can't, he can't do that because he can't get sewers, right? 
uh, you know, the assumption is that's true, yes. yes. Thionoxy would have to supply those sewers. So he can't build on it the way it is because he can't get sewers, and he can't rezone it to where he could build on it. Is that what you're trying to tell us? Well, we're telling you what the criteria are for the existing zoning district and what he is proposing he needs to have a different zoning district to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So, and Tonganoxy never gave you anything about how soon sewers will be there? They did they not. They could actually do we, that? We solicited he those. Comment on that. It's 3,700 feet uh, over hills to run sewer. So, not, so it probably won't be. So he's pretty much stuck with the land the way it is until who knows when. Again, Commissioner, I can't speak for the city of Tonganox or any other jurisdiction, I, simply for Leavenworth County. I, <laughs> I have a question. And if this doesn't pass, you're not planning on selling this for high density development anytime soon, are you? No, that's not the plan. Okay. But I'm right now, it's right. I'm, all I can do is sit on. Right. I mean, that's hard to sell something on the buyer. Right. Right. And since the way it is zoned right now, it's infeasible to try to run sewers there. It's just way too costly, right. especially for an individual. Um, man, there's water issues as well. Suburban water lines are under my property. And Tonganoxie water lines are not there have to either run to the corner and up, under the pond, or all the way around. Yeah. So it's infeasible the way that it's zoned right now for anybody or anything to do. I like the lake, though. <clears throat> it looks good. It's a good-looking piece of property. It looks yeah, good. The lake's great. They just, as long as you don't have to share <laughs> with anybody that... <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's why we would like to keep it that way. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay. We'll now hear from those individuals present wishing to speak in favor of the request. In favor of the request. Sherry Grogan, 16635 Leavenworth Road. And I didn't come here to speak on this, but... It is interesting. It's no surprise that we run into this kind of dilemma with the County Road 1 zone rezone that was done a few years ago. <coughs> this family has this nice-looking piece of property, and they want to do something with it. I don't blame them for wanting to stay on the property and, and actually support <coughs> their children. Uh, so I just encourage you to vote in favor of this. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. We will now hear from those individuals present wishing to speak in opposition of the request. In opposition of the request. Any other additional information to be presented? Staff? No okay. The public comment portion of this public hearing is now closed. The Kansas, the Kansas law allows for a petition protesting the decision of the Planning Commission to be filed. That petition must be filed within 14 calendar days after the date of the public hearing. Additional information on the filing of a protest petition, petition can be obtained from the Office of Planning and Zoning. Are there any questions or comments from the members of the commission? Again, we we run up to and we're going to run into it shortly in the uh, in the run up to our annual review of the uh, of the the land use plan uh, and and hard zoning in here. Uh, becomes very difficult for what the what the view of County Road One project was versus what's the reality of the growth pattern and plan for Tonganoxie, 
and they have not spoken in on this, and I believe they should, um, uh, you know, give us some idea of what they're thinking uh, before we have to make a decision on this. Because, um, you know, across the, across the street, it's still pretty low, uh, pretty high density, um, you know, with a, a residential three acres per unit, or three units per acre. Because um, we're fixing to do something, we're being asked to to overturn what was done uh, previously with a plan that was in place for County Road One project uh, for Tonganoxi, um, and and we're being asked to overturn that. Uh, without any comments from what the city is thinking. Um, I, I'm uncomfortable overturning what's been done, which is this is hard-coded. I'm uncomfortable overturning that without knowing what, what their thoughts are about County Road 1 district. I mean, that's just, that's just my thing. I... I you know, I mean, I I uh, agree with the landowner, and if it weren't hard coded, I'd just tell him, you know, let's let's stay as it is and just you know keep your keep your lots the way you want. Um, but since this is hard coded, and we would have to overturn our plan from 2021. And whatever the county road thing is, um, I'm just I'm I'm really uncomfortable uh, saying no to a landowner, but then also um, overturning uh, what, what's been done, and then we have a cut, and then we have a strange cut up. You know, we just talked about putting the 2.5 inside the 2.5 land use plan, and here we're talking about cutting out something that's already been hard. It's been zoned. Um, so okay. my only objection to all that is first thing, Tonganoxy was asked to comment, and yeah. they didn't, which is very common. It's almost every time they are asked no, to comment, I and they don't. Two is, on the other one, the person could still develop his ground and sell his ground in some way. In this way, in this situation, he can't do anything except for leave it the way it is. He can't build it on it, and he probably can't sell it because of the same situation. He can't develop it either way, uh, and that's the difference. And if you're waiting for Tungi to say, oh, yeah, we're going to have sewers there in the next five years, Think you're going to be waiting a long time. So, yeah, I, I agree with that, I and mean, we've, we've run into that problem <clears throat> before with the urban growth areas. Yeah, where all of a sudden a landowner, such as yourself, do you live in the city limits of Tonganoxie? No, I'm in the county. Can you vote for anyone in Tonganoxie? No. <laughs> but Tonganoxie can tell you how to use your property without a long-range plan. They tell you they've got a long-range plan, but it isn't documented, I'll bet. And it's just not right. A landowner ought to be able to use but this property, wasn't, yes. This wasn't zoned by Tonganoxie. This was zoned by the county. Yeah. It wasn't Tonganoxie. It wasn't Tonganoxie I mean, that zoned this. The urban growth areas right. that, that give them the law, the Kansas law gives them that authority to do that. Hey, Mark, we, I've already closed the public hearing. I got you. I got you. Okay. I got you. I hear you. Right. No. No. Marty. Marty. <clears throat> if you're ready to entertain a motion, I'll make one. Well, <laughs> any other comments? Questions? Uh, Come on, Jaden. Oh, it's just one of those where it's the... Sorry for the word, the bureaucracy of the legal documentation sometimes kind of spits in the face of just common sense yep. and logic. Uh, yeah, sure. So I don't know why it's as complicated as we're making it. 
I would love to see Tonganoxie say, oh, yeah, we, are, we will have sewers there within the next five years. Or, or no, we have no plans yeah. to get them there. Yeah, either so one way the or the other, they won't give us anything. And, yes. and, and well, I kind of yeah. halfway understand because they don't know. But are we going to let everybody stay where they are until they do? It's holding them hostage because the county rezoned something that requires Tonganoxie to be a part of it who's not a part of it. And so right. yeah. you're in this wasteland. Of yes. And also if they are five-acre tracks and sewers do get there, the ground could be split again, you know, right. uh, easy enough well, at and that it's time. That, and, it's, and it's real close. It's across the street. Yeah, right. So it, there's water, electric, sewage. Yeah, and three, I'm glad he's going three, with three bigger acres. tracks than I, I, mean, I would like to three see units per 10 acre. acre tracks. would be better yet, but uh, yeah. uh, uh, five acre tracks would be better than two and a half acre tracks, and because you could develop that possibly at some point down the road into smaller tracks. Yeah, it would be growth. You're, you're defining growth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yep, you're defining growth. Okay. One one other item, Mr. Chairman. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Amy, there is a number of two and a half acre zoned areas around this particular parcel. And 2.5 zoning would still allow them to develop at the density that they want the five acres. It would. Yeah. So they could still get yeah, the five it. acres if they zone two. Yeah, but it sure, would match the zoning could. directly to the Or they could go in bigger if they wanted to. However, we want to make sure that you understand our recommendation stands. Oh, I got you. Yeah. It's, it's based on the, I got it. I understand where you guys are coming from. Um, <coughs> Okay. Any other comments or questions? Thank you for your help tonight, staff. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions or comments? Okay. I will entertain a motion of this request, case number DEV-24-005, a rezoning request from PR-1 to RR-5 as outlined in posted agenda. So moved. Going to keep it at five. Yeah, do you want us to do two point five? So it matches. It still allows them to do. Yeah, that's yeah. We can do, do, do they our R two point five. They can still do exactly what they want to do. It just would match the. Sorry. If we put it to two point five, it still allows you to do exactly what you want to do. It just matches across the road. Yeah, because of the issue of water and six hundred feet within Tonganoxie property line. So if I have to go on city water. There could be exceptions to that, right? That's according to the city of Tonganoxie. I need more than three acres at level. If you're building in five-acre tracks. In the county. In the county, you're allowed to have a well. Right. Yeah. Well, it would only be well, zoned to Yeah, you could still build bigger. So you keep your planet. We would love 10, ideally. Well, you could do 10. You could do 10. Yeah. So just to be clear, even if it's zoned 2.5, if you develop a plot of track, Qualify for a well, regardless of how do you make that motion? It still allows you everything. Yeah, I, I, I didn't have it. I had it at the RR. The confusion, ar I think, arises because the inside city limits to be on a water well, you have to have a minimum of three acres. But that's a city limit yeah. requirement, not ours. So we can't, we can't, we can't speak in any way. Oh, I got you. Oh, so we can't change it. For any other jurisdiction, but we can tell you that in Leavenworth County, if those tracks are five acres, they can have a well. We have yeah. Okay. So, so currently the way the the, the way the um, the the consider is the case is written at five, which would, would allow him to have well and not have to. But if we change that, is there is there anything preventing us to change that from five to two point five? He could still go five acre. He could go ten acre. I would like for I would like for legal to weigh in on this if. Mr. Van Paris would weigh in for a modification of the application from 5 to 2.5. He can still keep it in 5. He can't advertise modification from the PR1, which is a maximum lot size of 10,000 square feet, to 2,500 square feet. 
to RR5, which is five acre minimum tracks, to amend it to a 2.5, uh, you could do so, and if somebody wished to protest that, they could then submit that protest petition, and that could be resolved by the Board of County Commissioners at their April 3rd meeting to allow Mr. Allen to proceed with his plan. So I think you could do so. At the same time, the applicant is here asking you for five acres. Right. Yeah, and if we went less than five acres, now he can't do a well. Yeah, he can't, because he'd, build, he'd still build a five-acre track. It's how big the track is, not what the zoning is. Mr. Chairman, um, he, can, he can still do that. I, I guess and this is really legally asked. You, if you want to modify his request down to 2.5 rather than 5, but it appears the intent here is to protect the lot sizes by having its own R R5. And that decision is yours. You're the policy makers here. But uh, just pointing out that what the applicant is asking for. Okay, I'll keep my motion as it stands with five to the five then, or R5. All right, so I have a motion on the floor as it's written to five acres. For approval. Second, for approval. For approval as it's written for five acres. I have a motion and I have a second to approve as five acres. Now I'll have discussion. I have a motion and a second for five acres. Discussion. So we're still at five acres. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. I have a motion and a second. Let me call roll. Uh, Jaden Bailey. Yes. Alan Stork. Yes. William Gustchalk. Yes. Jeff Spink. Yes. <coughs> Doug Tystad. Yes. Steve Skeet. Yes. Will Schmidt. Yes. Steve Rosenthal. Yes. The motion is carried by a vote of eight to zero and approve the rezoning request from PR-1 to RR-5, and that case number is 24-005. I'm looking for my paperwork here. Give me just a second here. All right. That completes tonight's agenda. Do I have a motion for an adjournment? So moved. And a second? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Meeting is now adjourned. Thanks, guys.
All right, we're going to get started in our second session here, real quick. Real quick work session going on. I'm sorry. It's all right. He'll, uh, He's going to use the restroom. Yeah, that's fine. All right, we'll give it. Uh, we'll give it ten seconds. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll give it we'll give it three minutes. <laughs> hey Joe. Hey, when you've been as sick as you've been, dude, you can talk about teams. We'll bring you in on MS Teams. You can you can speak through teams. So, in the last in the last public hearing, you know, on this particular, with all the discussion of Tonganoxi in the city of Tonganoxi, does does now the county commission zone and planning zone do from our decision? Does it get uh, informed to the city of Lansing city administrator? Does it? Staff and chose not to respond. I'm not editorial comment. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I would have been surprised if they did. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to head home and try to get stuff out of the garage because my wife's remodeling the kitchen since she retired. And uh, I don't know where we'll be next. Our garage is full of stuff. Are you trying to get the cars in here, of course? Hey, guys. Uh, just remember this, your comprehensive plan is a plan. Now, for whatever reason, because of the investment made by the city of Tonganoxie and the county on County Road 1, there was some hard zoning done on that corner. And you saw the result of it. They wanted a high-density area of development in that, on that one spot. And lo and behold, the owner of that property didn't want that. The I'll tell you this, you're running a main sewer line 3,700 major space and a major endeavor. And I'm talking major for the entire city. I'm talking multi-million dollar project. Uh, the land acquisition alone will be extremely complicated. So when you run into reality versus plan, and it's clear that the plan, however well-intentioned, is not likely to follow, change it. That's why you're here. That's why you review the comprehensive plan annually is to when you catch problems such as that, it gives you the opportunity to address them. And both the way, in reality, case. you are allowed to consider realities. And uh, you know, the plan is no longer practical or no longer feasible. Change it. Yep. Now, as I said, I'm going to head home. I'd like to two observations I want to share with you all. I was at present when the last comprehensive plan was uh, developed. There were at 
least four public hearings held at various points in the county. Yes. Pretty much the same people showed up at all four. Absolutely. And on the final hearing, after being discussed for a year and a half, the final hearing with the Board of County Commissioners finally approved this comprehensive plan. A grand total of six people appeared at that final hearing. Should I have those two or one of those? Six. Now, I don't know where the other 79,984 people were, but they were here. Because it was never mailed out. It was never informed other than Leavenworth Times. Because well, I was a landowner, and not one time was I ever notified, along with none of my neighbors. So I don't spend time reading a 10 cent worth of paper. And Commissioner, question then is, was the county going to mail out a notice as the plan devolves to all the property owners in Leavenworth County? I know we don't hesitate to mail out when we're having public hearing of land adjacent and around to all the landowners about a particular case. They'll put that and they'll put signs out. But when we're talking this planning zone, never did anything get mailed out. Neither did any of the city of the city commissioners or county commission, uh, city commissioners or city administrators that live in the Leavenworth County as a whole. But you know what I'm saying. Neither the mayor nor the city administrator ever put out to any of its public of these hearings of planning zone. So there's where your 79 plus thousand people were. No one was informed. And if we wanted to keep it quiet and only have five or six, we did an excellent job. Because that's exactly what we did. We didn't want people to come. That was my, that, that's, because I was seriously butthurt when I. Suggested the Board of County Commissioners, they conduct some additional form of outreach. And if, if you would be advocating that mass mailing to every property owner in the county, you would I think it doesn't have to be max mailing. I think the fact that every one of these cities have city administrators and city council members as well as a mayor, and that information would get out through churches, schools, and everything else. You wouldn't have to do mass mailings of something this magnitude. But at no time did any of that happen because it was intentional to not do that. That's my take on it. Marcus, actually... A lot more was done than just on the paper. They had a booth at the Lemworth County Fair. They had <coughs> on Facebook, they sent it out. Now, not everybody's on Facebook either. Nobody goes to the fair either. It was on Facebook, <laughs> and it was, they had a booth at the county fair, and it was manned every day at the county fair, uh, talking about the comprehensive plan. And like I said, they did send it out that. Could, but could we not put it like in our tax bill or put it on a your when you go to vote it's just a something that you wait, wait, like wait. i mean that's why i asked I stated my frustration because I, mean, I was a landowner and i got zoned into it but yeah well more than six <laughs> but i've gotten over it because there's nothing i can do about it so i've gotten over well, what it what i would say is this that, that i've been through more comprehensive plans than i care to shake a stick at and i can tell you that predominantly you're going to have maybe 15 to 20 and i don't care where the jurisdiction is if it's in Johnson County, if it's here in Leavenworth County, if it's the city of Lansing, I did many, many of these. You'll have the same 15 or 20 people that show up to these meetings. And you can try to advertise on multiple platforms. And I know I personally got at least three emails. I live in the county. I got three emails on this comp plan. I wasn't part and parcel to any of that. But they, but I was on an email list. So we, when we go through this again, we're going to use all of those same platforms. But I promise you, it will end up the same way. You will, you're going to struggle to get public participation. And you have to keep in mind, you have to keep in mind that at 80,000 people, if you have 30 people that consistently show up, those 30 people cannot hold the other mass amount of people hostage to their specific idea. You have to weigh the entire plan, the entire county, and every element of the plan, not just the future land use plan community facilities, all the components of that plan should be weighed as a count, uh, from, a, from a county standpoint as a whole. But I understand exactly your frustration. A lot of people have that same frustration. But I promise you, when we go through this again, these same things are going to occur. Regardless of how you advertise, you're going to have that same situation. I was never notified. Well, you're, if you know this process is going on and, and they make every effort to notify you, 
You have, you bear some responsibility. I'm a property owner in Woodward County. I bear some responsibility to to educate myself as to the process. Yeah, of when the I got you that. To happen, yeah. You know? So at, at least in in my view, you know. A good example I, is we just had some people complain about the comprehensive plan. I told them, well, we'll be discussing it here in a little bit. Yeah. Who's left? Yeah. I but, mean, but you know what? They, the county paid for that company to come out uh, <laughs> over the County Road 1 corridor. Yeah. There was 40 to 60 people at every meeting. I was at every single one of them. Um, and we came up with a plan, and the county voted on something completely different. After they did paid all that money, like $60,000, to have this company get everybody's opinion, and they were like, that's cute. We're going to go with this. So people are like, why even show up? What difference does it make? They did the same thing on the comp plan. What we yeah. approved is, is what they approved. I don't mean to interrupt, but we do have one. Of yeah, I guess. Yeah. And we'd like to get started and kind of give you the abridged version of, of what we want to present. Hey, wait, wait, wait. You, you, don't, you. you don't get to go save the car. <laughs> 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 Thank so, you, Mr. Parrish. In a, in a annual review of the conference plan, in essence, what you're you're looking at your progress in your implementation plan. Okay. It should not be, nor is it is the staff's intention to rewrite this plan on an annual basis. That should not be your focus. Your focus should be with the action matrices that are included in the current plan. What is still pertinent, what is not pertinent, what are the what are the high high five value targets within that implementation plan. And with that, I would ask Amy to give her presentation. She put a great presentation together. And we'll identify a few strategies here that we're going to recommend to you moving forward. Okay. As John mentioned, our objectives of tonight are listed here. So provide a status report of all the objectives of the comprehensive plan and then provide you with uh, recommendations of strategies that staff feel should be amended because it either does not um, pertain to what we're doing now or it needs to be amended to better fit with what... Um, projects and all that have occurred since the plan was adopted. And then also to provide you with um, those strategies which with which our department like to focus and other departments would like to focus in the 2024, and then also give you potential 2025 and 2026 target strategies. So um, first we're going to start with where we're at on all of the strategies that were outlined in the comprehensive plan. Um, the, so the status report. So I'm not going to go through everything. Um, we can definitely mail this out to you guys later. Um, but this is just providing you with where we're at on every single strategy that was outlined in the comprehensive plan. Um, you'll notice that the status will either say it's complete, um, if the strategy requires uh, multiple years or it's something that we revisit annually, it's, it's going to show as ongoing. Um, some of those say annual review, so it's stuff we do as part of the annual review. And then we also include what proposed years we anticipate working on that specific strategy. So as you can see, this is mostly just the implementation of the comprehensive plan. So a lot of these have been completed or they're ongoing due to the fact that we review this annually. You want to go to the next one? Um, again, same. This is in part due to the adoption of the comprehensive plan. So most of these are going to be ongoing or annual review objectives. Next one. Again, same thing. You can go to the next one. There we go. Um, sorry. Next one. All right. This one is land use and economic development. Um, as you can see, some of these have already been completed in 2023. We did work on a lot of language amendments that year, so um, it has been completed. Some of those are noted or used as needed, so if the need to revise some of these things arise due to conditions changing in the department or in the county, um, we will obviously revisit it. Um, do you want to keep going? Again, um, some of these are proposed for this year, some are proposed for next year, some are proposed for a couple years out. And then the next section we get to, oh, can you go back one? It looks like we got cut off on some of these. Okay. Um, when we send out the amended, we'll include all the other sections. There's a transportation section and then there's a utility section that was not included. My apologies. Um, if you want to continue. 
Okay, so the next section is these strategies that we are proposing amendments to. Again, these are just the strategies. This is not the comprehensive plan we're proposing amending, just some strategies. Um, the first one is uh, strategy four, and it says conduct an, an internal update of the plan every three to five years, dovetail this review with the uh, preparation of the county budget and capital improvement program. We don't currently have a CIP, so we removed that. Um, obviously, if a CIP were to be created in the future, we'd bring it back, but that does not make sense since we don't currently have that program in place. The next one, um, it refers to communication and market in the plan to celebrate the plan's success. It says the first one is to regularly maintain and update the plan website. Um, as of today, the plan website is no longer functioning. Um, we no longer have that website, so to keep this strategy does not make sense. Um, so we are recommending removing it. Um, the next one is utilize the developed project branding style guide to ensure a complete, com consistent look and fill in plan-related messaging. Um, we never received a project branding guide. Um, we will try, obviously, to um, make sure all communications in regards to the comprehensive plan are professional and match our internal policy in regards to um, structure and content. Um, but we did actually not receive a style guide as part of the comprehensive plan. So again, we're recommending to remove that because it, we can't do it. You want to go to the next one? All right, and then this next um, series of recommendations for amending is to remove planning and zoning as the uh, primary department for economic development strategies and instead place economic development. At the time that the comprehensive plan was adopted, we did not have a, an econ economic development director, and we now do. So he would be the appropriate entity to make sure that those strategies are um, processed and uh, continued. So. We're just moving planning and zoning out of that role and putting economic development into it. So do you, you guys have any other questions about what we're recommending? Um, you said you're going to email that to us? Yes, we will email okay. it out okay. to you. Mm -hmm. really that you. makes sense. Okay, so on to 2024, these are the proposed strategies that we are anticipating working on this year. Um, so again, some of these are going to be a part of the annual review, or they're ongoing strategies that we do internally within our department already, um, or the uh, Public Works Department and such. Um, of note... Um, There's a conduct a work session with the Planning Commission and County Commission to educate them on the findings and recommendations of the plan. Um, we are anticipating creating like a newly elected or appointed official orientation packet. Um, we have some things that we provide you guys, obviously, when you come on board, but we want to expand that um, to better meet this strategy. Um, so the intent, I don't need to interrupt. No, so you're the, fine. So the intent there is to clearly educate both at the Planning Commission level and the BOCC level in the absence of ongoing work sessions between both bodies. I think that was the intention when it was originally adopted. It doesn't look like that strategy has worked out. So we're trying to individually educate so that we can have some congruence of opinion as these actions move forward from this body to the BOCC. So that we don't have totally different ideas on all right, and then the next one is that bottom one, draft a summary document at, um, that includes key recommendations from the plan that can be distributed to resident developers, businesses, and other interested parties. Our recommendation there on that last column is to provide a 10 bullet point list that we can put on our website and give out to potential developers and such um, to show or to um, quickly analyze what the comprehensive plan is trying to accomplish so they don't have to read the whole document. Um, so that is what our goal with that strategy is. You want to go to the next one? All right. Um, the 2.2, the second strategy, create a tiered review and approval system for special uses within the county. We are, rec we are going to be working on creating a tier system for our special use permits and also expanding our HOL our home occupation licensing regulations to allow for additional uses. I'll talk about that further in depth, but um, that is what we're recommending you for that one. Um, the next one is integrate the land evaluation component of the land evaluation and site assignment or LESA or LISA system into the special use permit review process. Um, instead of taking that whole uh, assessment tool 
Um, we are proposing to instead develop field criteria um, that staff thinks is pertinent to our county um, and then bringing that to you guys for consideration. Um, that might include um, preserving floodplain um, and such. So we will, again, discuss this with you in the future, but that's what we're thinking with that one. The next one is update the county zoning and subdivision regulation. One quick thing, just so you know, 17.3% of Lumber County is located in floodplain. Most of, most of the, the prime farm area is located within or adjoining floodplain currently. So that's why we're going to attack that particular Mm -hmm. Yep. Next one, update the county zoning and subdivision regulations to include gra graphic examples and description, descriptive text that illustrates conservation design principles. Um, we are recommending establishing some design guidelines um, for potential developers and applicants to better understand some of these concepts we're talking because they can be difficult to understand to an average person that isn't normally in the business. So um, that is something that we are hoping to get accomplished as well. Um, the, graphic, the graphic illustration is not helpful as it relates to a plan like this. When it's very, very specific and you have architectural elements, maybe parking elements, planning elements, those kind of things for a very small parcel, then yes, it makes sense to put graphic depictions there. But that's a waste of resources and we think performance standards are a much easier way to go and better way to go and it still offers the designer a wide open element for a creative design that complies with the conference. That's our, that's our. All right. Um, consider the use of incentives to encourage applicants to incorporate conservation design principles into their development proposals. Um, again, uh, that can also be accomplished through PUDs, which um, is something that you have seen come before you, as well as creating that development plan criteria, which um, we've kind of already done, but to also keynote on those previous two strategies we talked about, just trying to make sure that developers know that there are multiple options in order to preserve land, ag land, floodplain, right. And the and other such. element of the PUD is that you are confined to that final development plan. You, you have to comply with the final development plan. If you don't, it becomes an enforcement not a conceptual plan. It is, you are you are you are dedicated to that that plan that passes and approved. That's it. So a PUD is a great tool and it offers some safeguards. In line with with that, something that I had read in another document, um, a citizen participation plan with developments like kind of incentivizing and almost mandating in some areas involvement with the community of a developer? Is that something that would ever... Well, you do that through the public hearing process. You know? So, I, again, I think you, it, you talked about <coughs> the slope. When you're talking about property rights, it's not just the property rights of the adjoining parcels. The, the people that are right. petitioning <coughs> have exactly the same property rights. Right. So if you make them go through an extended process that's outside the, the, the guise of a normal development process, because there's pressure from the adjoining neighbors, there are some legal components there mm -hmm. that, that may be difficult to overcome. So when you weigh these, keep that in mind, that both property rights, both for the applicant and the adjoining properties, are identically the same. You can't sacrifice one for the other. Right. They have to be equally weighed. Do in they that comply I was with the regulations? Even though it may not be popular, do they comply with the regulations? Or they not? If they don't, or if they do, and it's a negative outcome, there is the potential there for further legal action down the road. So whatever we whatever we propose to you, we're going to propose under that premise that those property, those property rights are equally weighed from the staff standpoint. All right. Another one to note on this slide is identify funding for an economic development strategic plan. Not necessarily the funding, but economic development is currently working on a um, strategic plan for his division. So I, we do anticipate that being completed in 2024. Yeah, the Sorry. key word there is funding. And you said, well, not really funding, but the key word there is funding. All right, keep going. Yeah, and, and we're fixing it pounded. To, it, yeah, we're trying to get as quick as possible. Our, our, our intent here is to hot target the items that, that really can be accomplished, and if they can't be accomplished, we're trying to note that here. If there's budgeting elements, well, we can't guarantee you that it's going to be funded. We, we all know this budget's going to be extremely tight. So we're going to put it there. It's in the implementation plan. We're going to attempt to make it happen, but we may have to look at it again next year when we do our annual. All 
All right, the next one of note on this slide is number five there, review and potentially update the county road standards based on the bus management practices, peer county practices, and FHWA guidance. <laughs> the Public Works Department is actively working on that, and to that next strategy, um, notification will be made to the cities within the county when those standards have been updated. Um, and then the last one, host regular coordination meetings between the county municipalities and utility providers to ensure utility infrastructure is properly maintained and residents receive quality service. Um, so the Board of County Commissioner has directed John to um, put together a utility commission um, tasked with looking at countywide utility related issues. Um, so if you go to the next slide, um, there's, oh, sorry, I apologize. I moved things around. Um, so John will be working with utilities, creating this commission of representatives from all the various parties um, to talk about utility-related issues. And with anticipation that in 2025, we will have uh, some strategies, such as maybe a utility plan, master plan, or something based off the recommendations that come off that utility commission. Oh, that would be really good. Well, the intent there is to at least discuss the problems and come up with potential solutions. Yeah. That, that commission will come back to the BOCC with recommendations, which again will be filtered through you as well. Yeah. You know, those items are going to be uh, sanitary sewer, that's a huge one, water, and internet available. Yeah, internet, so, right. You know, those, the, that is akin to electrical or anything else these days, so we need to at least consider those options. I can't tell you what the makeup of that's going to be yet, but we again want to move forward with, with forming that commission and, and you know, developing the scope. Okay, for timing purposes, I'm just going to skip 2025. Like I said, we'll email this out to you guys so you can have a better look out of it. Um, but okay, so our top priorities, as we kind of discussed, first is these special use permit tiers. Um, the idea is to create a tiering system for special use based off of the intensity of the proposed special use permit. Um, and that would create, um, a, you know, a tier system for proposed time periods allowed for that special use permit to operate or other potential um, conditions that would be placed on the special use permit. We anticipate, work, anticipate working on that in the May to June time frame. Um, the next thing is home occupation license expansions. Again, to try and help reduce the number of special use permits that are uh, approved through the whole process, we are recommending or going to recommend looking at our existing home occupation license regulations to see if there are additional businesses or uses that could fall under that, obviously with strict criteria in which those businesses would have to meet and specifically not causing any negative impacts on its surrounding properties. And if they can, then putting them through a home occupation license then rather than a special use permit. And again, we're proposing that for May to June. And the last one is that utilities commission that we just discussed. Um, they're still working on a timeline for that, but the anticipation is that it'll be this year. Uh, okay, and then the next slide, we just have put together the next steps. So um, once we have a work session completed, we will go ahead and schedule the Planning Commission hearing, which we're proposing for April 10th. That will be the public hearing for this review process. And then it should go before the County Commission if the April 10th hearing is concluded um, on the May 1st, 2024 meeting. And then we will begin implementation, hopefully starting in May. So as, as a, just a general overview, the amendments to the implementation plan that are no longer pertinent or just absolutely are Viable. We strike those. The action matrices, all the elements in the implementation plan, along with the years and responsible parties, we want to do that so there is a plan of action, not just a general guide. Three, the three big ticket items expansion of HOLs, tiered SUPs, which talks about densities, that, that intensities. That means that anything that is super intensive is going to have a very short timeline. Going to have a super intensive piece like that, and you need to do it under an SUP. That means it's not in an industrial area, it's in some other area. You don't need a 10 year or 20 year or in perpetuity SUP. You have to perform, or you won't have an SUP anymore. And the less intensive that use goes, there'll probably be three tiers. The less intensive the use is, the longer the time period for the tiering. That is the logical way to accomplish that, and there's a start and end date. Think needs to happen. The HOL expansion will take a look at a lot of the SUPs that I don't believe need to be SUPs. They really are home-based businesses, and we really shouldn't be 
going to an SUP process on this. So the high water marks for this year's amendment. You're, you're going to see that we're not proposing changes to the future land use plan. We're not proposing wholesale changes to the plan itself. This plan is just a couple of years old, a $250,000 plan that's two years old. So you're not going to see me come in every year to rewrite this plan based on a handful of things that happen. Unless there are big development trend changes, in other words, other areas of the county are developing much faster than areas that were anticipated in the plan, you're not going to see me come in and say, we need to change these future land use plans to accommodate the current development of the market. We're not seeing that right now. These are, these are the same steady market growth areas that have been going on for the last five years. So <clears throat> with that, and we'll get out of here, um, who's doing the strategic look at from the land use map that we had where we took five acre and greater county and we put them down into the two and a half which is a huge area two and a half acre right uh, minimum uh, who's doing the study to see the taxes coming in cover the cost of the roads and everything else that we're paying well, I mean so so, so, we're, so we're so we're growing Right, and we're growing in rooftops, and we're doing. Who's calculating and capturing? Is all of that really in pay when we're talking having to build schools, and we're having to build more roads, and well, we're having to build this, and we're having to? Are, schools are outside the preview. Yeah, we of, have of right this particular plan. The road improvements or the transportation components are weighed as part of the comprehensive plan, but are budgeted through public works department. Interior subdivision roads are paid for by the developer. Well, I got that. I'm talking the other roads. Like Our general having... roads and corridor studies, as in every town, are weighed based on their use. And then the budgetary dollars are weighed based on trips, typically, and classification of road. That's typically how it's budgeted. So from a development standpoint, we're keeping track of the development that, that's occurring in specific areas of the county, which in theory would tell you, okay, transportation elements need to be looked at in this particular area, at least in way. So and do we have no that road. yet? I'm sorry. Do we have that yet, John, before you get off that? Do we have that transportation you have plan? A, you, you have an essence of transportation plan in your conference plan right now. What you don't have is an overall plan that incorporates all of the public uh, all of the public. <laughs> Road the element road. of okay. the transportation. Okay. You all have right. all the pieces. Okay. So it is my intention to put that into a singular a singular plan. Okay. Okay, but it's not going to be a new plan. It's no, I got you. I got you. Plans. I just want to I just want to make sure someone's capturing it because yeah, we are. We're, we're because, capturing you know, it. The word is we need growth. We want growth. That's the reason why we did this plan. We want growth. We want to we want a neighborhood out in the entire county. Yes. Sir. Okay. Well, are we showing that it's really paying? Are we showing it's costing us tax dollars more because we're growing out and we're having to do roads and roads and roads and roads? Well, homes, okay. homes again, don't pay for roads. Got that right. Again, you're so it doesn't about, make any sense when we say about, we need rooftops. You're talking about you're talking about tax dollars, and I think what you're you're talking about is a diversification of the tax base by adding more rooftops. Well, there's really only two choices: you can do commercial development or you can do residential development. That's how that's how you can generate a tax base. Well. You don't have the utilities to generate huge commercial development. Well, that really only leaves you with one choice. So, at the end of the day, can I tell you how much is being allocated for each of those peripheral artery roads? I can't, but Public Works probably can. But right. Again, that goes into a larger that goes into a larger plan that they have to weigh the entire county, not just the areas of New. No, I know, I know. That's uh, why I'm saying, who's doing that strategic look? Who's doing that strategic study? It happens on an annual basis in, in multiple departments outside of our purview. Okay. What we try to keep track of is where every one of those new building permits goes so that we, we can anticipate development trends. We know geographically yeah. where that expansion gotcha. of new, new homes is going in. So that theoretically, we know where more trips are going to be happening on smaller, unapproved areas. Okay. And so we share that information with other departments, and then they take that through their budget cycle, and it goes through the BOCC, and they determine what goes where. I got you. With that, we'd answer any other questions before the hail hits.